Hello everyone, this video is all about glycogen storage diseases. Now, um, I'm going to be focusing on mostly testable material for step one specifically, but I think other people that are also studying these uh, diseases might also find this video helpful. Now, um, the best way to approach studying glycogen storage diseases is uh, having a fundamental knowledge of basic biochemistry. Uh, knowing which enzyme is deficient for each disease will help you deduce all, at least most of the clinical findings that you will see in a typical patient with that disease. So with that being said, I'm going to first mention the enzyme deficient in each disease and uh, work my way through this table, uh, which might seem a little daunting right now, but everything will come together and it'll make sense as long as you memorize the enzyme associated with each disease. So for von Gerke's disease, uh, type 1, glycogen storage disease, the enzyme deficiency is glucose 6-phosphatase. Glucose 6-phosphatase, if you remember to biochem, back to your biochemistry knowledge, is the very last enzyme responsible for the dephosphorylation of glucose 6-phosphate into glucose, right? So it just basically removes that phosphate from glucose 6-phosphate in order to liberate glucose. Now, if you remember, um, glucose is phosphorylated, which means a phosphate is added to it, in order to trap it in the cell and cause it to be committed to that glycolysis pathway, right? So if you are unable to get rid of that phosphate from glucose, you cannot release the glucose from that cell. So the liver is going to be affected mostly in this disease. So without a proper functioning glucose 6-phosphatase, you get severe hypoglycemia. Right, because you have that impaired final step in gluconeogenesis. Thus, your liver is not working and you get a buildup of glycogen at the liver. Um, and the ones that I feel like you should know, uh, the points that I feel like you should know are going to be bolded and underlined for you. So you can see here severe hypoglycemia is a very important finding in von Gerke's. And because of that, the treatment would be frequent oral glucose. So you always try to keep a baseline of glucose since your liver is not able to maintain uh, your glucose levels normally. So now, because of this severe hypoglycemia due to the enzyme deficiency, you are forced to use whatever glucose. Uh, you, cannot, you cannot perform aerobic glycolysis, basically. There's not enough glucose around. So you end up performing anaerobic glycolysis. And thus you get a high lactate, lactic acid or lactate um, in your serum. Okay, and that's also going to be another clue. Now, uh, gout, which is which was also a point found in uh, the first aid section. Um, the reason for this, I had to do some research, was because of uh, mostly because of the competition uh, for excretion by lactate. Right, so lactate is going to compete with um, uric acid for excretion, okay? And also due to the decreased pH because of the lactic acid buildup in the blood. So because of this, you, what are the treatments for it? As we said, frequent oral glucose and avoiding fructose and galactose, right? Try to keep that blood glucose at a baseline and never let it fall or else you get severe hypoglycemia and uh, you might pass out. So moving on to type two, uh, glycogen storage disease Pompeii, everyone knows that this is a death at a very early age and it's mostly going to be due to heart defects specifically. Um, the heart is going to be majorly affected because I guess it makes sense because you're not able to produce or to break down the glucose properly or to release the glucose properly or utilize the glucose properly. So you get cardiomegaly and a histological, a very specific histological uh, finding in this disease is going to be glycogen buildup within lysosomes. Okay, so you're going to get inclusion bodies. So if you ever get an electron micrograph on the test and it looks like the child died at a very young age, um, or even if hypotonia is thrown in there, immediately you should think Pompe's disease. Okay, type 2 glycogen storage disease. So the interesting thing about this is that this is a lysosomal enzyme. Okay, um, and the name alpha glucosidase is another name for lysosomal acid maltase um, this actually showed up on my step one exam so it's good to to be familiar with 
other terms for each enzyme um, as best you can at least okay so pompase is fairly straightforward hypotonia death by 2 8 2 years old and it's most likely going to be because of a cardiac problem okay and it's and that cardiac problem is due to the glycogen buildup within the lysosomes okay so moving on to type 3 and okay so in terms of type 3 and 4 the best way that I felt like getting them straight because Corey and Anderson um, I could never remember which one is type 3 or type 4 so the mnemonic that I used um, I can't remember where I found this or whether I came up with it myself was 4 3 a b c d okay 4 3 referring to type 4 and type 3 and then a b and c d referring to anderson disease branching enzyme so a b anderson branching and cory debranching c d right so that helped me get it straight and i've never looked back ever since so three and four uh so four three a b c d just remember that it's four three and not three four so four three a b c d okay so uh we can start with four then since the mnemonic tells us to, uh, so type 4 Anderson disease is going to be a deficiency in the branching enzyme. So because of that branching enzyme deficiency, you get a histological finding, which is very specific for this disease as uh, amylopectin-like uh, glycogen. So that just means it's just a linear strand of glycogen uh, as opposed to the normal branching fruit-like or tree-like branching of normal glycogen. It's going to be very linear and it's going to be similar to am amylopectin. Okay, um, so that branching enzyme is pretty fatal. This is not in first aid, but um, I'm pretty sure I got this from UWorld. Death at two years and infantile hypotonia. Uh, but you are most likely not going to be tested on this. And if, but if you are, the histological picture is probably going to give it away. Um, so remember, linear, and it makes sense because you don't have the branching enzyme, so you get linear strands of glycogen instead. There is no way for you to branch it. Okay. Now, moving on to type three, Corey's disease, you get a debranching enzyme deficiency. Okay, this is going to be similar to the picture of type 1, Von Gerke's disease, but it's going to be milder than type 1 uh, with regard to um, uh, hypoglycemia. So you're only going to see mild hypoglycemia and normal lactate. Gluconeogenesis is not affected at all in this, okay? So debranching enzyme is going to be responsible for moving two or three glucoses off of uh, a branch point and adding it onto the linear strand of glycogen okay uh, and because this is not going to be able to uh, function this enzyme you get limit dextrin like structures in the cytosol instead so limit dextrin like meaning that there's going to be one or two glucose uh, residues at the outer branch um, of all branches right at every branch point or not every branch point but at least the branch points that uh, have reached the very end right so you will only get one or two glucoses because you aren't unable to move those to the main strand okay so remember the histological pictures because it will help you quite a bit and if you do not understand what these uh, terms mean or i'm not explaining it fully enough or you cannot visualize it for any reason always google the images because you never know when a histological picture will come in handy or will you know come up again potentially on the test so you want to be familiar with that as best as you can uh, but anyways that's the the most important thing so it's going to be like type 1 but you're going to have mild hypoglycemia normal lactate and gluconeogenesis is going to be unaffected whereas in von Gerke's you got severe hypoglycemia with high lactate and gluconeogenesis was impaired okay very simple now for the last two type 5 and type 6 uh, the best way for me to remember that is MM and HH. So McArdle is going to be mostly affecting the muscle, whereas HERS disease is going to be affecting the liver. So for McArdle, it's going to be skeletal glycogen phosphorylase, so skeletal muscle glycogen phosphorylase. So within our muscles, the glycogen phosphorylase is the one that breaks down the glycogen in order to uh, create glucose, right? So if you are unable to break down the glycogen, 
what are you going to see on uh, the muscle biopsy, right? You're going to see a very high amount of glycogen uh, accumulated in the muscles, right? Uh, whereas the liver biopsy is going to be normal, okay? So if they tell you or uh, give you the findings on, of a biopsy of the liver or the muscle, they are most likely going to try to either uh, give you a hint about the previous ones that uh, I talked about with uh, clear histological um, facts or histological pictures that are very typical for each disease for, for type 2, 3, and 4, or they're going to try to try to get you to distinguish between type 5 and 6. Now, uh, if skeletal muscle glycogen phosphorylase is deficient, the blood glucose is not going to be affected, right? Because the liver is the most important uh, source of glucose control, right? The liver and um, I believe the kidney plays like a 5 to 10% role in uh, gluconeogenesis. But the liver is the most important organ for maintaining glucose. So if the skeletal muscle glycogen phosphorylase is affected, the hepatic glycogen phosphorylase is not going to be affected. So glucose is going to be okay. There is no hypoglycemia in type 5 McCarl's disease. Okay. Uh, but in the muscle biopsy, in a skeletal muscle biopsy, you will see accumulation of glycogen because it cannot be broken down, right? And because the muscles are unable to fuel or gain, uh, break down enough glucose properly through the breakdown of glycogen, you will get muscle cramps and myoglobinuria. So because you are unable to break down the glycogen within the muscles, you will get muscle cramps. Um, so basically, you cannot, there is not going to be enough energy uh, created for the muscle activity that you must do. So usually people with McArdle's disease um, are going to have symptoms at uh, when they are most active. So let's say they start working out all of a sudden and uh, after an hour of working out they find that, or maybe 30 minutes, they find that they're very weak and their muscles are hurting uh, and they might go to the washroom and might pee red. They, they might have red in their urine. You know, and that is just uh, myoglobinuria, which is a pigment within muscle cells. Okay, so um, as I said, uh, because the muscles are not going to be able to make enough energy through the breakdown of glycogen, they will have they will undergo my they will have undergo rhabdomyolysis, which is just the breakdown of muscle tissue, and release the myoglobin in the urine, maybe cause some damage to the kidneys perhaps, and you're going to see increased CKMM levels, okay? This is very specific for muscles, okay? Uh, but remember, there is no hypoglycemia with skeletal muscle glycogen phosphorylase deficiency. Now, the final enzyme, or, or the final disease, type 6, HERS disease, uh, you're going to see a deficiency of hepatic glycogen phosphorylase. Now, this enzyme is responsible for maintaining uh, or breaking down the glu glycogen in order to supply glucose to the body within the liver, right? So, if you are unable to break down glycogen and uh, supply glucose to the body, you will definitely say, see hypoglycemia. So, that is one of the main distinctions between time 5 and 6 you will definitely get hypoglycemia. And because of that glycogen accumulation, because you are unable to break it down, right, um, you will get hepatomegaly and cirrhosis potentially. Um, and gluconeogenesis is going to be okay because you could use... Um, there's, there's, Remember, there's different sources for glucose, right? They could come from amino acids or uh, triacylglycerols. Um, but remember, glycogen breakdown is going to be affected, so glycogenolysis is not going to be okay. Okay, it's going to definitely be affected. Um, and that's it for today, and I hope I helped you guys, and let me know what you think on the comment section, and good luck on everything.